I think it's hilarious that people are always talking about you need a tower speaker or you need a giant speaker to fill the room because you don't. I have listened to a lot of speakers in my living room and you just don't need giant speakers. You're gonna need a subwoofer if you wanna fill in the low end, but maybe people that buy giant speakers are compensating for something. PMC Prodigy One Bucard P300 ELAC Unify Reference SVS Ultra Bookshelf Wharfdale Evo 4.2 All of these speakers are coming in around the $1,200 to $1,500 point. That's why I was super excited to get these in for a listen. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's see how these Italian made speakers stack up to their competition. <laughs> speaker because it's so beautiful look you got a shiny shiny front baffle on. it's like baltic birch then it's wrapped in a leather like substance on the back very nice speaker binding post actually have a bevel within the five-way binding post that makes it super easy to get the banana plug in there i know that's kind of silly but it's one of those things when you actually use it and you're reaching behind the speaker trying to get it hooked up and you're like they beveled the binding posts. They have beveled binding posts. It's really nice. Front ported with a really cool base. One of the best looking speakers I've ever seen at the price point. As I stated before, these are coming in at $14.99 a pair, which is actually, listen, I know that sounds expensive, but when you think about it, it's an Italian made traditionally distributed speaker that looks incredible. $1,500 is kind of reasonable when you compare it to Wharfdale Evo 4.2, granted, that's a three-way speaker. Elac Unify Reference, again, three-way speaker, a little bit cheaper, but it's not built nearly as well. SVS Ultra was $1,200 actually on sale, but I think the new top tier SVS is gonna be around that price point. Bucard P300s I think are more than $1,500. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I think these are actually well priced for what you're getting. Two 29 millimeter high definition DAD, which is trademarked driver. I don't really know what that means. 150 millimeter, all this metric, 150 millimeter paper cone driver. Hey Siri, how many inches is 150 millimeters? 5.91 inches. Crossover point is listed at 2600 hertz. Frequency response, 55 hertz up to 24,000 hoods, 86 dB sensitivity. And I could definitely tell when I was comparing the SVS Ultra that they had a lower sensitivity. Four ohm nominal impedance, recommended amplifier power, 30 up to 150 watts. It's a good size speaker because you can put it in a small room, an office, I ran them here in my office, also ran them in the big room with a subwoofer. And let me tell you, I think it's hilarious that people are always talking about you need a tower speaker or you need a giant speaker to fill the room because you don't. I have listened to a lot of speakers in my living room and you just don't need giant speakers. You're going to need a subwoofer if you want to fill in the low end, but maybe people that buy giant speakers are compensating for something. Papery woofer, it's really nice. I can't emphasize enough just how awesomely built these speakers are, how beautiful they are. They're not the heaviest thing. Hold on. It's so sharp on the planet. Ow, don't do that. Bass, okay, in the office, these didn't hit as hard as other speakers. They don't hit as hard as the SVS Ultra. They don't hit as hard as the ELAC Unify, but they're top end way better than the ELAC Unify. They don't hit as hard as the Bucard P300, but what they do have 
is a bit of a cooler tone in the bass, but with that cooler tone, you get a lot more detail. Like Miles Davis, so what? There's a lot more clarity in the bass with the Sonus Fobbers than the rest of the speakers. Soundstage and imaging was th the biggest difference maker for me between any of these speakers that I compared. I was listening to Am I Evil by Diamond Head. It was a live version and it was incredible. It was one of those experiences where it legitimately felt real. And that was with the Pioneer VLX VSX X305. It's, the, it's a home theater receiver I have in the living room. So I'm editing this video and I just noticed that the VSX LX305 is $699 right now. So I don't know if this thing has been discontinued or not. But I found it on B&H Photo. I'll link it. I don't have an affiliate relationship with them. It is available on Crutchfield. But Crutchfield, it's only available as a scratch and dent for like $900. $700 for this thing is crazy. It's got D-Rack, all sorts of stuff. And it actually sounds pretty good. Anyway, if you're in the market, buy it from B&H. It's a good outfit. It's a camera place in New York. I've been there. Between the SVS Ultras and the Sonus Faber. The soundstage was definitely more realistic on the Sonus Faber. SVS had a more powerful sound, had a clean sound too, more powerful, more in your face, but a lot less dimensionality front to back. Didn't have nearly as high of a center image either. And I didn't have them pulled out from the wall all that much. The level of separation between the instruments in space and the singer was, I think, significantly better on the Sonus Faber versus the SVS Ultra. <laughs> mid-range. When I first put these speakers up, I had them hooked up to my Advanced Paris A10 Classic, one of my favorite pieces of hi-fi equipment at this point. I listened to vinyl initially. I listened to streaming too. Immediately, like the mid-range clarity smacked me in the face. I'm like, oh, this is an audiophile speaker because I actually wanted to listen to more acoustic-based music. Patience, Chris Cornell was just magical. Mumford & Sons, I know, I get hate from Mumford & Sons, I don't know why, but all the acoustic instruments just sounded incredible. It made me want to listen to music that I thought would do good, do gooder on these speakers. Kind of like when you go to an audio show and you just hear the Hotel California playing over and over again, the acoustic version, or like Nora Jones or that type of a thing. That's what I wanted to listen to because it sounded so good with that type of music. But I needed to put my music on them and I needed to play them louder. So I put them in the living room. So right here, all right. One, two, three, three and a half yards. So what is that? 11 feet. One, two, okay. So they're nine feet apart. I'm sitting 11 and a half feet away from them, which isn't ideal when it comes to, I don't know, soundstage and imaging and having them exactly where you're supposed to have them. And trust me, that does work when it comes to soundstage and imaging, but not everybody can do that. In my room, I probably could play around with it a little bit. I probably could pull them out from the wall a little bit, but I have other people to think about. So I kind of leave stuff where it is and then I adjust it if I need to. The thing about these speakers though, I never felt like I needed to adjust them. I mean, they're legit only about maybe 10 inches from the wall, but having the front port makes them a lot easier to, I guess, place without having to talk them into like soundstage and imaging well. Am I Evil? Man, that Diamond Head version of Am I Evil, if you're a fan of that song, which of course Metallica did that song, you should listen to it, but it was so much fun. So if you're into live music, if you're into that type of music, listen to the live version of Am I Evil by Diamond Head. Going back to my notes. What's up, Danger? It's off the, um, the Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack. So there's electronic drums in that. Starts off at like 20 seconds, and then it's every two beats. So one, two, three, four. Anyway, that click was a little bit more, if not a lot more, apparent on the Sonus Faber than it was on the SVS Ultra. And I thought, uh-oh, because I pulled out my RTI, my, my real-time analyzer, and that was happening around 1700 hertz which is upper mid-range for me, which can get really fatiguing really fast. So I was concerned that this speaker was going to be fatiguing and it's simply not. So whatever bump is around that 17, 1800 Hertz, it must be 
only at 17 or 1800 hertz because I did not feel like this speaker was fatiguing at all. Depending upon the recording and depending upon the amp, you could have a little bit of sibilance going on, which I did with the Pioneer. I didn't really notice that with the Advanced Paris A10 Classic. The irony is I think this little speaker actually plays better in bigger rooms. Now, it sounds great in a small room too, but it really stretches its legs when it has some room to breathe. And that's when you get that magical soundstage and imaging. Okay, let's talk about sensitivity. I was able to drive it off the Pioneer, which isn't a powerhouse. Most of my listening was done 70 to 80 dB. And I'm gonna do another video about just how loud 80 dB is, because I see it in the comments, a lot of people are talking about, oh, I wanna make sure that I can get 90 dB sustained out of my speakers and it's that's ridiculously loud even 80 db is ridiculously loud in a big room like this the speaker had no issues playing loud i got it up to the 90s this thing actually really holds together well when a speaker is clean clear and agile at lower volumes a lot of time at higher volumes it falls apart and i did not have that experience with the sonus faber Lumina 2 Amator. I don't know how to say the model. Like, I don't know if Amator is the model, Lumina 2 is the model, or Lumina 2 Amator is the model. It's a big mystery for me. Either way, however you say the model name, this speaker at louder volumes maintained the same sonic characteristic as it had at lower volumes, which was really surprising. I think for me, that's kind of a first. In medium or large rooms, you're gonna need a subwoofer. I had the SB1000 Pro from SVS hooked up and I did not have it playing loudly. So it was really just filling in the bottom portion of these speakers on both the SVS Primes when I listen to them, SVS Ultras when I listen to them, and the Sonus Fobbers when I listen to them. If anything, I pulled the subwoofer down even further on the Sonus Fobber so I could make sure that I'm listening to the speakers and not the sub. At $1,500, I think it's amazing. I think it's built better than any other speaker that I've seen, felt, heard, listened to in this price range. So, I mean, the Bucard P300's built really well. They don't have that really high gloss front wood baffle. The binding posts on the Sonus Faber are sick. <laughs> They're so good. Love the leather wrap around it. Now, the design may not be for you. You may not like it. I get it. Everybody has different proclivities likes dislikes when it comes to aesthetics but i like it i think it's awesome um if i had to choose between this the pmc prodigy one the bucard p300 the elac unify reference the wharfdale evo 4.2 i think i'm leaving one out it was the big speaker that i love so much the monitor speaker uh arendal that's right arendal so the arendal surround speaker the 1723 is 1850 a pair the monitor S is 2,000 pounds. Anyway, here's, here's the takeaway. I would rather have these than any of those other speakers, with maybe the exception of the PMC Prodigy 1, because I think the PMCs hit harder. Actually, I know they hit harder, but there's something special about the Sonus Faber when it comes to the immersive nature of the music and the detail. And I'm kind of a detail nut when it comes to my music, so I would... I'll trade a little bit of bass punch, bass presence for mid-range and top-end detail because I know I can add that back, the bass punch, with a subwoofer. But I don't think you need a subwoofer. Frankly, I think the bottom end is fine. I think it's just more prominent on these other speakers that I talked about. I couldn't be happier with this speaker. Would I buy them? Absolutely. I'm actually probably going to inquire if I can buy them, if I can get a discount, of course. Knocks it out of the park. Do I recommend them? Well, if you like what I like, yeah, I would recommend this speaker. I think it's awesome. I think if you have the budget for it, you should get it. I don't think there's really anything that's gonna give you that lower mid-range bass clarity. Maybe the RSL speakers, but those speakers don't have that bass weight that these do. Maybe the Polk R100s, kind of, I don't know. Nothing that really jumps off the page to me as far as, hey, this is a lower cost alternative. Because one of the tricks this speaker plays, and not really a trick, is since you are getting such good soundstage and imaging, and you're combining that with the Sonics, you can't really divest 
those two, right? It's part of the experience. And the Sonus Faber, I think, are just exceptional. And I think at $1,500, it's the speaker that I would buy. What I would buy, probably not going to be what's right for everybody out there. I like them, though. I think they're awesome. And they're beautiful. So, if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon-only Zooms, Patreon-only Discord group, Patreon-only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links. Although, I don't think I'm affiliated with any of the Sonus Faber dealers here in the United States. You can buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. Click on it. Give me a couple of dollars. But don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can also sign up for Amazon Music for free. And you can try it out. I got all sorts of high definition music. That's about it. You can like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your new Sonus Faber speakers. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.